Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about all DC games for the Nintendo GameCube. Batman Vengeance would have been a very good game if not for the controls and the camera. This combination makes a very good game into a frustrating experience. Even if the first levels of the game will seem good, later on the unresponsive controls and the bad camera angles will get to you. The combat is enjoying, until multiple enemies attack you and the camera and controls go bonkers. But aside the controls and camera that follow you throughout the whole playthrough, the game is pretty good. It has a lot of platforming, you get fist fights, you can use battle ranks and other gadgets, you get boss fights, puzzles and you even see vehicles like the Batmobile. So on paper, the game formula is dense. Also the game nails the atmosphere, with good music, great cutscenes and nice story. Too bad that the controls and camera get to you, because in rest it would have been a very good game. Superman Rise of Apocalypse is the game after the TV show, and it does some parts good, and others, well, it still has to improve other aspects. First, the good stuff. The spaces are huge and the cell shaded graphics look nice. Also Superman has lots of moves he can perform like ice breath, laser eyes, a different assortment of punches and kicks, he can fly, but the controls feel clunky in some moments and the collision does not work sometimes. The game still nails the fidelity to the show, it makes you feel like Superman which is a great plus. The objectives are varied, but sometimes they are frustrating as they have a time limit and the time window is so small that even a slightly wrong button press can get you to fail. And remember that the controls are clunky, so it will happen more, more than you like it. Also aside the toughness of the game and the damage you get from enemies, Superman gets a lot of damage from enemies, you also have limited abilities. You have a power bar to use your powers, and this makes the game harder in some sections and makes you lose the satisfaction of the game. But considering the bad legacy of Superman games, this one is pretty good. Okay, it's average, but considering that we have a lot of bad Superman games, this one stands out to be a little better. Aquaman is a very bad game and you can spot that right from the start when the camera moves in such a jiggly and bad way that you already don't want to play anymore. The combat is well, just look at it. And the whole game you swim in this ugly underwater city with poor draw distance that all looks the same and has annoying invisible barriers in unexpected spots. The gameplay is repetitive. You do this combat stuff over and over and it, it gets boring. You either have to beat up enemies in the time limit or beat enemies before they destroy something or fly. But none is satisfying. Also the presentation of the game is horrible. You get some comic book panels that don't look like comic books and the text even gets over the bubbles. The music it's is, is just a track that loops and there is no voice acting. And the game even has 14 hours of gameplay. If you want to die inside, I, advi I advise you to play the game. Batman Dark Tomorrow is a truly bad game. The controls are bad, the combat is bad. For example, during combat you have to handcuff any enemy or else they get up. And it sounds easy and okay, but if you have 5 guys beaten up, you handcuff one and then the rest of them get up. You beat them again, you handcuff one and then the rest get up again as you can as it takes time to handcuff one guy. And seeing the animation over and over again it's annoying and it's very tedious. Also the use of the bad gadgets is annoying too. For example if you want to use your grapple you have to leap of faith off a ledge and pray to attach to something and not fall. And if you want to use the batarang you remain still and have to aim and this leaves plenty of room for enemies to strike. And the camera angles are again horrible. Also the game takes forever to load. And not only this, 
but it loads Freak 1 too. Everything in the game works incredibly wrong. There are more flaws that I could list in such a short video. Don't play the game. Batman Rise of Sinso is the first good game from this list. It's a beat'em up. That's about it. No platforming, no puzzles, you just beat every enemy on screen and proceed to the next wave of enemies. And the formula works. You have a punch button, a kick button and you get many different sorts of combo moves. The time limit will be a bummer if you play on higher difficulties as you can't beat up all the enemies in time, but if you play on lower difficulties the game is nice, except for the end boss. When you get to Sinsu, you will have a hard time. This boss is so difficult you will want to cry. Also you can play with 4 different characters, Batman, Robin, Batgirl and Nightwing. The game will be atrociously difficult at the final boss, but in rest it's a good beat'em up. And Batman Begins is also a decent experience. The best part about the game are the graphics, which are gorgeous in many occasions. Also the stealth part of the game is awesome. Basically you have to sneak up on enemies and scare them. And you get many different animations when you scare them. And also the Batman scenes are awesome. The parts where dialogue appears. The only bad part about the game is the combat which is clunky, feels imprecise and ruins the great stealth parts of the game. Also the animations aren't that great either. But you also get some bad mobile levels which look amazing and add enjoyment to the gameplay. It's a decent experience, but considering that it's a tie-in game and usually tie-ins end up badly, this game is really good. Teen Titans is a well-made game, it's a brawler, you get to play with all 5 Teen Titans at once and by a button press you can switch between them. Because all members are on screen at once, the screen will be filled with action and I have to say that it's satisfying. As you progress more and more, you unlock more moves, the graphics look really good and they manage to catch the feeling of the show. It's a great game, I recommend you to play, it, it, it's cozy. Sure, it's just your stereotypical brawler. You beat up the wave of enemies and progress to the next wave up until the boss arrives. But it's cozy and I like it. And Catwoman is another bad game. The animations are weird, the controls are bad and even the combat is bad. You can't knock down enemies with just hitting them. If you just hit them, they get back up. You have to knock them into the environment to defeat them. The camera angles are bad and you can't adjust the camera. And the platforming is lousy. Not only in concept, but the bad controls make the lousy platforming parts even more of a chore. Also, on rare occasions, enemies auto-defeat themselves. I mean, just look at this cop throwing himself into the dumpster. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, click the join button and choose one of the perks. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. I've left the links to those in the video description. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and till we read thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching!